So first, let's let us introduce the Vera One design. So uh, about the barrel one and the technology which gonna use it in the barrel one, I guess uh, we already introduced a lot. Uh, so here we just uh, mainly focus on how to design the barrel one. So let's directly move to the objective. Um, on Accomplish of this course, you will be able to first describe the challenge faced by the enterprise barrel one. And second, we will review the basic function of a Huawei Cloud One solution. Then we will talk about how to design the barrel one. So first we will talk about the basic design roadmap of the enterprise barrel one. Then we will describe the tunnel and the VPN design for the barrel one the SRA and the reliability design for the better one. And last, we will introduce the optimization and the ONM design for the better one. So for this slide, there will be six sections. Uh, so first, let's look at the current station, the current situation and the challenge of the enterprise better one. Uh, so we know that the barrel one, we can classify the barrel one into the IP barrel one network, which this IP barrel one network, including like the MPRS, the SRV6, SR, uh, MPRS, those kind of uh, network, barrel one network, we all call it IP barrel one network because this is based on IP. Another is a, a, trans, a transmission barrel one network, and the, which will be used to carry the IP packet. So for the um, barrel one uh, network design, what we talk about is the uh, IP barrel one. So about the trans transmission barrel one network, we will not um, talk too much because this course is a data count course. So we will not talk about the transmission barrel one network design. We mainly focus on the IP barrel one network. And also for the enterprises, most of the time what they only care about is this. This most of the time is uh, that you rent from the ISP. Okay, so uh, this picture we actually already mentioned before about the barrel one architecture. We know if the barrel one, I mean, it's uh, for a large scale barrel one, basically we will um, classify into we will divide them into three layer, access layer, aggregation layer, and a core layer. So access layer, most of the time, you, th this is uh, trying to access, provide access for the enterprise site, which is in different region or maybe uh, with different services. For example, I got a, a data center here, and the some data center I provide uh, uh, the services is for the outside. And some services, which is pro, which is for the internal inside. So, for those two services, we can connect them into different access layer. And also, uh, for some company, if they have many many different branches in, located in different places, and you can based on the region, based on the location, to uh, uh, to provide the access. And uh, uh, so the access layer will be connected to the aggregation layer. And the aggregation layer most of the time will be uh, based on the geography location, based on the, uh, the location. Maybe those br branches, they are in the different city, but those cities belong to certain province. And uh, most of the time the aggregation layer will be based on this location and trying to uh, aggregate that uh, traffic from different cities, different places. And then the core layer will be the uh, top layer in the connection area, which provides the high speed uh, 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 switches, high speed exchanges from uh, uh, to different aggregation. Okay. So now like uh, the one, 
typically the, the, the one will be uh, the one architecture will be like this. And uh, uh, nowadays the uh, the enterprise barrel one uh, the requirement is changed. So which means the barrel one architecture also will be changed. So first, uh, normally uh, the one architecture will still uh, have access layer, aggregation layer, and the core layer. But uh, when you build in, uh, I mean, you need to create a one network, right? So for the physical architecture, there will be a little bit different. The before one, this is a logical architecture, but the physical architecture will be different. So let's look at the trend for the better one. So first, the better one, they won't have like a, what we call the mounting network convergency. Before, some network, they will divide the, uh, they will build the barrier one network, network based on their services. For example, I have a production services, I will create a individual isolated barrier one, and another, maybe it's office traffic, I will create another barrier one. And uh, so, but now this, if I want to create more services, does it mean I need to create a more better one? So you can say this will cost a lot. So nowadays, uh, the companies, the enterprises, you're trying to converge the mountain network, make two network, converge them into one network. And another uh, trend, another requirement for the enterprises is they want to have a flexible mounted services barrier, uh, which means after I converge uh, the two network together, I need to have some way first to carry the mounted services and uh, make them isolated to each other. And also I can make the mounted services barrier much more flexible. For example, I from data center two to data center one, I want to, to create a, a tunnel to, to create a path. And as for some other services, I want to create another path. Those paths may be the same, maybe it is different. I want to have some easy way to create them, to flexibly create them. And the third is high reliability that uh, we won't have some uh, way to guarantee that even some link is filled, the traffic can still forward into the destination. And uh, the last requirement for the enterprises is uh, very easy to do the operation and the management. Okay, so, so to achieve that, how to achieve this? Let's look at the challenge which is facing by the uh, enterprise barrel one. Okay, we, we know this is a trend. The mounting network converges a flexible mount services barrier, high reliability and the easy OEM. This is the trend. This is a requirement for the enterprises. But why this is a challenge? Let's look at first for mounting network convergence. The challenge is this will be a little bit difficult to isolate the mounting services. We know we can use the MPS VPN, but uh, to deploy the MPS VPN, it costs uh, a little bit time. It, and, uh, it, it need people to do the configuration. And uh, think about if we got a lot of branches, the configuration you're facing is a lot. And second is a flexible mounting service barrier. The challenge is the network resources planning is not precisely enough and the traffic path planning and deployment are difficult. Uh, for example, if I want to go into the center one to the branch and others, um, I, in the center one, I maybe have many, many different services. And uh, if we uh, just use MPS, D, uh, MPS LDP to carry those kind of traffic, it may have, uh, we, we may be facing the congestion congest. And uh, if we use TE, it will be difficult to do the configuration. And also for the traffic path planning also will be difficult. This is a second requirement, uh, the, the, the challenge for the second requirement. 
And for the third requirement, the high reliability, the challenge is if you do the convergence in the old way, in the old way, we do the convergence, we deploy the FRR, those FRR cannot be used in all scenarios. And also for the service SRA, we cannot effectively guarantee. I mean, in some scenario, we cannot um, uh, make the high reliability happen. Okay, and the last uh, requirement for the EZO and AM, the challenge will be like, uh, um, uh, because we cannot see the traffic before. Before we only use the network management services a server, we cannot see this uh, traffic. We can only see, okay, there's uh, some uh, interface is congested, that's all. So this challenge is what we're facing right now. So how to solve it? So basically we can use the Huawei Cloud One solution and uh, we can use the network slicing technology to and the SR technology to, uh, uh, to, to solve the difficult mountain services isolation um, challenge. And for the difficult traffic path planning and deployment, we can use, we can use uh, the controller and with SR and SRV6 to make the path planning and the deployment much more easier. And the lack for faster network convergence and the services SRA assurance, we can deploy the TRLFA FRR as we uh, introduced yesterday. And also we can use HSP technology to make the convergence to make the convergence, network convergence much more faster. And the last for difficult traffic path optimization and lack of a virtualized uh, ONM, uh, we can use like either TWAMP or an IFIT to uh, monitoring our traffic. And with the controller, we can uh, virtualize, we can see uh, the, uh, we, we, we can do the operation and the management much more easily because we can virtualize all the information. Okay, so before we uh, mm, talk about how to do the design, let's look, let's take a little bit of review for the Huawei Cloud One solution. And all the uh, design, those design will be uh, trying to, will be based on the Huawei Cloud One solution. Okay. So uh, this, let's go, uh, let's do, uh, let's um, talk it briefly. So Huawei Cloud One solution overview. So basically we will uh, have a controller and uh, below here it will be, we will try to control like the NE devices and uh, use some new technology for, for example, SRV6 at center to guarantee the SRA. And above that, we can have some uh, uh, and uh, the customer uh, uh, portal uh, to connect with uh, the controller. And uh, the NC IP architecture, uh, this, this part I just uh, passed. If you are interested, you can check the slide later. And this is a device which will be used in the Huawei uh, Cloud One solution. The ATN, NE, and the NE and the CX. Uh, ATN, uh, let me do a little bit introduced. The ATN will be used uh, for the IP RAN, IP RAN network. This will be used uh, to connect with the base station. I mean, base station for the wireless, the LTE, 5G, those kind of base station. And for the metro network, we will use any devices. This will also be controlled by the master NCE. And for the backbone, we can use NE and CX. CX is another type of router, which will be used, widely used in the ISP. Okay, so for the uh, main function for the Cloud One, so basically we have uh, four functions. Those four functions will help us to solve the problem which will be, uh, which, will, which we are facing before. We are facing for the, uh, the, uh, we're, we're facing for the enterprise challenge. So we can do the automatic, uh, automatic planning and deployment of boarding paths. We can have real-time network performance monitoring and the intelligent traffic optimization. 
and we can have the network slicing for isolated traffic boarding and a virtualized OEM for quick port location. Uh, so uh, about this function, let's uh, look at quickly. So for the path planning and the deployment, so basically this is uh, how to deploy the SRO, SRV6 uh, policy. Okay, we can use uh, MS NCE to do it. And about the network performance, network monitoring and uh, optimization, uh, they will use the, T we will, uh, the Cloud One, uh, Huawei Cloud One solution will use the T1 and I feed to gather the information, gather information and uh, uh, through the SNMP FTP telemetry, those kind of uh, 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 protocol and technology to tell the, uh, the, the traffic situation, tell the network quality to the master NCE. And the master NCE will automatically optimize the traffic, optimize the forwarding path. Then they will create a new, they will send a new path to the network, they will create, uh, so they will follow the new path to optimize the traffic. And about the slicing, we actually also we mentioned, I mean, I guess it will be uh, the day before yesterday, I guess. Yeah, we, we already mentioned about so what is uh, slicing. Uh, so basically slicing, you can consider uh, it, you, it is uh, a technology which is uh, similar to the TDM technology, time division mounting apply. This is technology uh, similar to the TDM technology. And uh, uh, it can um, divide the one physical interface into several physical, sub-physical interface. Okay. And also we can do like the uh, ONM overview. Or ONM overview. Okay, so for the uh, Huawei Cloud uh, uh, Cloud One uh, solution, they have many many uh, places we can use it. And for for example, in the financial Cloud One scenario, we can use the uh, Master NCE uh, Cloud One. We can use the uh, Master NCE IP to control uh, their backbone network. Okay the backbone network from between the DC and between their uh, branch. So we can control the traffic forwarding between them. So uh, about the solution, let's uh, just uh, talk a little bit over this. And uh, now let's move to the design. First, let's look at the basic design of the enterprise barrier one. So for the basic design, there will be three, uh, three uh, aspects we need to design. It will be include the physical network design, like how to connect the router, how to connect with each other. The second is IP address planning. And the third we will design the loot, the loot design. Okay, so for, let's look at the physical network design. Uh, the physical network design will be including the core layer design, aggregation layer design, and access layer, uh, layer design. So the core layer design, there will, we need the following, uh, we need to consider the following fact and uh, let's uh, and do the design. So first we need to consider the service volume, like how many uh, current services is, uh, exist in the, current, uh, in, in the network. And what is expected the services growth for the enterprise. And the second is a physical location, uh, like where you put the code node, where you put the code, uh, the code node, those devices. Uh, to ensure the code node are secured, you should put it into some security places, right? And easy to obtain, easy to do the management, easy to do the maintenance. And also you need to consider the number of nodes like how many devices you should put there. And uh, when you calculate, the, when you count the number, when you count the node, so you need to think about first, the, co the call layer usually will adopt the full mesh, should ab adopt the full mesh and should use the dual plane. Like uh, this is plane A and this is plane B. So when you're trying to 
deploy a new site or trying to do the design, you need to, you, when you count the number, you should consider these kind of factors. Okay, so, and about the aggregation layer design, uh, uh, you need to, you must take into account of a services type and a scale on each aggregation node. And in the initial phase of the barrel one, planning and uh, construction, the aggregation layer can be planned based on existing enterprise services. So here is a three model, uh, like, like you can, Consider like when you planning the aggregation. Okay, so first you can consider about the, uh, you can uh, do the data center and services center aggregation. Okay, this is one type of ag ag aggregation uh, devices. Okay, so this is being used to aggregate the, the, the traffic which is in the data center. So for example, we can based on different services because in the data center, we have many, many different services. Based on services, based on the data center area, we can create a data center aggregation then connected to the collier. Another type of aggregation will be the metro aggregation. It is uh, in the metro, inside of the city, we maybe have different instructions institutions okay for example some institution is uh, your local institution some is uh, your, uh, your, your 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 other companies institution you you all want to uh, connect it to your network so you can create a man uh, which is a metro aggregation and the third aggregation we can uh, based on the region to do the aggregation region branch aggregation Maybe we have a bunch of a branch which will be located in one region and puts aggregation devices here. So to aggregate the services, aggregate the traffic. So this is aggregation layer design. And for the access layer design, uh, basically when you design the aggregate layer, you need to consider factors such as the bandwidth requirement for the access services, uh, the required private line, and the private line prices. And then you also needed to consider the access reliability and traffic load balancing. So this is an example for the aggregation. So first, for most of the time, the aggregation layer is, uh, uh, it will be a dual homing. You will have like multiple uh, uplink. And also when you planning the uplink, when planning the bandwidth, you also need to consider the price for sometimes, uh, three links sometimes three links will be cheaper than two links i mean for example i i have like, my total bandwidth with requirement is uh 20 megabits so you rent a two 10 megabits link sometimes the prices will be uh, ex uh will, you, you will cost more uh, it will be more expensive than you by um, uh, three, seven megabits link. So sometimes you need to think about the private line prices also to see if this is, uh, uh, if maybe it will be cheaper or not. Okay, so this is access layer design. And also there's another things we need to consider because when we trying to deploy the uh, uh, access layer, when we're trying to connect the access layer with, with the barrier, with, with the aggregation layer, or maybe aggregation layer with the core layer, or maybe between the core layer devices, when you try to connect them, sometimes you need to use a private line. So those private line, you also need to consider which private line you should select. So basically for the ISP, this can, uh, th those ISP private lines, they can provide basically is this. Most time is MSTP or OTN, or sometimes they will use DWDM. So for the MSTP private line, most time it will be provide the services, it will 
be used to connect with access layer and access layer with the aggregation layer. So this is MSTP, uh, private line. So most of the time when you do the design, you know, connect the access line, access and aggregation. Uh, most of the time we just use MSTP private line, it will be okay. And uh, if the aggregation layer and the core layer are in the different equipment room, in different places, we can use MSTP and OTN to provide the services. And in the core layer, most time we will use MSTP and OTN to make them connect with each other. And sometimes DWDM private line will also be used if the core layer, core layer devices is in the same city and they are use the fiber to connect with each, each other. Sometimes we will also use DWDM private line. Okay, so this is, that is a physical network design. And second, let's look at the IP address planning. So for the IP address planning, uh, we will we basically will have three type of address we need to plan. First is IPv6, IPv4, then IPv6. And also when we try to deploy the SRV6, we also need to plan the SRV6 location, the locator. So for the IPv6 address, Design there will be certain rules. Um, we need to guarantee the IPv6 is unique and uh, it is continuously. And also, we need to con consider the scalability for the IPv6 address and the meaningfulness of the IPv6. So, when we look at this IPv4, sorry, IPv4 address, this is for all for IPv4 address. So when we look at this IPv4 address, we need to know uh, like what is, where is that this IPv4 being used? So the IPv4 address um, in the barrier one, so those IPv4 address, uh, you need to consider, you need to do the design. So, so first, the interconnection address, uh, IPv4 interconnection address, you need to do the design. And second, the interconnection address of the backbone network devices, you also need to design it. And also for the loopback address, you also need to design it. So if you have the controller, if you have the controller, sometimes the controller address is also you need to be designed. So first, loopback address design rules. So basically, first we need to use the 32-bit mask for the Loopback address. And uh, those loopback address, um, allocated loopback address based on the physical location and uh, reserve sufficient address uh, space. And second, locate loopback address for the same geography location by plane. If there's a two plane allocated address uh, to plane one and a plane two in sequence. Okay. And uh, for the uh, interconnection, interconnection uh, IPv4 address, there will be following planning suggestion. First, for, inter, uh, for interconnection address, use 30, 30 bits long masks for IP address. And the access layer address, uh, the access layer devices interface on the barrier one network need to uh, connect to the original network. So you can use the, the traditional uh, planning, the origin planning. For example, uh, your access address, which this extract address means as a, I connected to the client, those kind of address. You can use like a 29 bits long or maybe 26 bits long based on the original planning. And for the address location sequence, uh, allocate the interconnection address in Accent ascending order and the loopback uh, address in descending order. And the interconnection between devices of the same layer, those kind of IP address, uh, you need assign an odd address to the devices with a smaller number and an even address to the devices with a large number. This is for the same layer. And the interconnection devices at a different layer, those kind of uh, IP address, you, you can assign the odd address to the devices close to the network core and the even address 
to the devices far away from the network call. Okay, so this is a suggestion, but for the enterprises, if they have their own rules, they can follow their own rules. But without that rules, you can follow this suggestion. And here is the example, which is, uh, you can see, we can use all the address for the devices and even address for the for far away from Collier. And all the address devices with a smaller number and the even IP address with a large number. Okay, and the loopback will be located in descending order. It's like that. Okay, so for the IPv6 address planning, um, it will be a little bit difficult, uh, different from IPv4, because for the IPv6, we have 128 bits long address. So, which means we can do more defined for the IPv6 address. We can define different uh, area. We, we maybe have a different uh, meanings for the IPv6 address. So, to, uh, so that's, that's why for the IPv6 address planning, we needed to uh, clear the requirement for the customer first, like how many number of the address is required, the address type for the filtering and uh, ACL, the looting domain on the network and where loot summar summarization is performed, we need to clarify those kind of requirements. Then we can, based on the planning rule, like a unified uni uh, uniqueness, uh, heresy, uh, security, those kind of uh, uh, planning rule to do the plan. Okay, so for the IPv6, uh, we know, uh, we, we said that because this is 128 bit long address, 128 bit long uh, number. So we can divide those uh, number into very many, many different area. Okay, uh, normally uh, IPv6 address, we will divide it into three parts. First is a fixed prefix. This is where you uh, apply you you uh, apply the IP address from the INA. They will give you uh, the fixed prefix. Then you will have the fixed host address. This is where you plan like for how many hosts can be used for this IPv6. And the middle part here is what you can do the planning. What you can do the planning, like uh, what is the network type, what is the allocated, uh, uh, what is the network type, what, where this device, uh, IPv6 address is used. This part is where you can do the plan. Okay, so here is an example. Here is a suggestion. There is an example when you trying to plan the IPv6 address, like how many area, how many uh, fields this IPv6 address can be. Uh, 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 can be defined. So we can, um, for example, we can put a four bits attribute ID. This attribute ID will be uh, like, what, this means like, uh, uh, what is the type of uh, network, uh, what, what is uh, uh, to distinguish the address type? What type of address it is? whether this is IPv6 address or maybe it will be used as a locator. And also there will be a network type. What type of network? Is this OSAPF address type? It's a loopback, it's an interconnection uh, address. We also can set the area, area ID. For example, this is AS1, AS2, we are at a different area. And uh, then a locatable address block. Maybe you have some other information you want put into this IPv6 address. Uh, so this is uh, the IPv6 plan planning suggestion. You can divide them into different subnet. So different subnet, different field can uh, define into different things. So it will be easy to, uh, to, 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 how do I say, to plan the IPv6 address. So here is an example. Here's an example. This is an interconnection address, so it's this. Uh, it's a prefixed, uh, fixed prefix, and uh, this one is for address usage, area, interconnection device, interconnection link. This is for the interconnection, loopback address, fixed, fixed prefix, area, device, right? So you can set it. 
so you can set it. So that is for the IPv6 address. And let's look at the locator planning, like if you want to use SRV6. So about the SRV6 seed overview, I will not uh, review right now because uh, we already talked yesterday. So let's uh, pass this slide. And the locator with the locator mean, let, let, let's pass it. Okay, so for the uh, locator planning, if you want to use SRV6, uh, basically we can divide it, uh, the SRV6 into several um, subnodes, several fields. First, it will be a fixed prefix. That is, uh, we cannot change. And the subnet, uh, also, uh, this is uh, being planned before. And uh, uh, we'll, there will be eight bit will be reserved. And here is something we can plan. First is site ID, which, which what is a site? What is your site? What is your uh, device site? And the node ID, which is your node, node one, node two. And there's a function for the locator, the function for a locator. Okay, this is a function you need to plan. You, you remember the, the SRV6, we have the locator, we have the function, we have the arguments. So function, we also need to be planned. And the argues, arguments, this is a prim primitive field for the SRV6 uh, seed, but most of the time we just uh, uh, leave it to zero. Okay, so uh, when you do the planning, there's something uh, you need to consider that uh, for compatibility with a feature seed comp compar compression, so keep this part from, from side state to here within 32 bits. And it is recommended that this part contain 32 bits. Okay, so in the future, it will be easy to compress the seed. And here's an example for the typical SRV6 locator. We have a fixed prefix address, where this address being used, where is this locator area, the device number, and this is locator length, like a, what is a locator length? You can say 80, 88 bit is re recommended. And then it will be a function. And uh, uh, we have uh, 12 bits long for the argues, and uh, the rest we have uh, 27 uh, function, uh, 27 bits long function, which can be configured manually, and the rest of the part will be then dynamically assigned. So this is uh, uh, SRV6 locator planning. And the last, uh, let's look at the uh, looting design. Uh, there will be two type of loot, loot entry, uh, loot protocol, the IGP and BGP. So for the IGP, Basically, we will have two type of uh, uh, looting protocol we can choose, RSS and OSPF. So it based on, first, based on the network scale, you can, for large scale, RSS for the small and the middle size, OSPF. And for the support here, for IPv6, SRV6, and SIMPS, they are similar, they are similar. But uh, if you wanted to use the IPv6, the RSS will be better because uh, as as you do not need to deploy a new protocol. You, you just uh, based on basically enable the as so IPv6 feature will be okay, but for OSPF, you need to configure the OSPF v3. Uh, so if you wanted to deploy the SRV6, uh, as actually is more recommended, but OSPF is also okay if you want to use. And, uh, um, and for as as for the IGP, uh, because uh, most of the time we will use RSS in the backbone network. So for the RSS, uh, recommended is use layer two uh, level. Use level two uh, RSS. And when we are planning the IGP, there's also something we need to consider is the metric, uh, metric planning, the cost. The IGP cost and the IGP metric. So here are some design rules, and this rules is important. Ensure that the metric of access layer link is lower than the aggregation 
layer link. And ensure that the ma metric the aggregation layer link is lower than the core layer link. And ensure the metric link between the data center is lower than the one link between the branch and data center. And ensure the interplan traffic between the data center proficiently tra traverse across the planning through the core node. And if the stand alone RR is deployed, ensure that the metric of the link between the R and the core P is set to the maximum value. Okay, what does this rule mean? Let, let me just uh, uh, tell like why why we need to why we need to design the metric. So first, why the access layer or maybe aggregation uh, link or maybe access link the cost should be lower than the uh, the core. The reason is this, because if we want the trap, for example, I have an aggregation layer and they are, have many different, there's another access layer here. So when we have the, uh, the traffic is switching between the different access layer, we want them switching locally. Inside of the aggregation layer, I want them to do the forwarding. I do not want them to go into the core layer then come back. Because the core layer, most time we are using the ISP, we are, we are rent the ISP a private link. That private link, the bandwidth is limited. But for most of the time, the core layer and aggregation layer, those link sometimes is inside the uh, company. They are not going out. So they are prefer to forwarding, for example, different access site, their, um, their information is prefer to switch inside inside of the access layer or maybe inside of the aggregation layer. Okay, then the second layer is like uh, the RR cost of course should be uh, large, should be the largest cost because we do not want the traffic to go through RR. And third, uh, between the data center, the cost should be lower then the data center between the uh, branch. The, the, this reason is also very simple because the, the traffic we want forwarding between the data center is directly forwarded, directly exchange with them. We do not want the traffic go to the branch, then go to the data center. We do not want this thing happen. So this is why between the data center, the cost, the IGP cost should be lower than the, between the data center and the branch. And there's, a, there's a, another uh, cost requirement is ensure the interplan traffic between the data center uh, prof prof proficiently uh, traverse across the plan through the core node. Through the core node. Okay, if, if we want to order the traffic like this way, it is recommended that we switch in core, core layer, in core layer. Okay, because the core layer, between the core layer devices, between those two link, most of the time those link is uh, the enterprise link. It's not a range from the ISP. This is their own link, their enterprise own link. So, which means this bandwidth, this have large bandwidth. So if I have the traffic forwarding between the core layer, inside the core layer, prefer to exchange it here because here have large bandwidth and this link most of the time is not rent from the ISP. We have large bandwidth. So this is why we plan the IGP metric in this way. Okay, and for the BGP planning, um, uh, for, for, for first, we will uh, create the BGP neighbor with R of course in the barrier one network and uh, uh, and for each in the uh, and the recommended is uh, back, uh, the barrel one, the backbone network for the, the barrel one network for the enterprises we put into the one AS. And the different area, different uh, places, we set another AS. So make them to connect with e eBGP. This is recommended we do it in this way because it will much more, because we know BGP will easy to manage the loot, to control the loot entry. So we use eBGP, we use the BGP to, to exchange the 
loot entrance between the different places, it will be much more easy to control the loot. Okay, that, that, that is why we need to use the BGP to do, do it, to connect a different area. And also, uh, and, uh, uh, and since the courier have a, a dual plane, double plane, dual plane, so they must have, for certain services, they will mainly use one plane and another plane will be standby. To achieve that, we need to use BGP to do it. Most of the time, we, we need to change the BGP metrics. We need to change the BGP attributes to do it. Most of the time, we will use MED to do that. Most of the time, we will use MED to do that, okay, to change the MED value at the PE. Okay. And, uh, uh, and when you deploy the BGP, there's the other things you need to consider is that because for BGP, when, the, when, when at a barrier one network and a, uh, enterprise, for example, data center or branch network, when they uh, exchange the loot, when they import the BGP loot to, when they import the BGP from, when you import the loot from BGP or to the BGP, there's one thing you need to consider, you need to prevent the loop and the suboptimal loot. So you need to do the um, loot policy at the CE. So you can prevent that there will be a, a loop or maybe a sub-optimal loop uh, loot happened. Okay, just a filter the traffic, come back here, okay. So this is a basic design for enterprise barrel one. And then let's look at the tunnel and the VPN design for the enterprise barrel one. So the tunnel design means how to design the SR and the SRV6, and the VPN design is just, uh, you, you know, like we, we can isolate our network services into different uh, VPN. So for the tunnel design, basically we'll have uh, the SIMPS and the SRV6 uh, tunnel design. So about the concept of the Tunneling uh, here we just uh, passed. I guess everyone uh, is familiar like what is tunnel, what is MPS tunnel, what is MPR LDP tunnel, what is T tunnel, what is SI and SRV6. And about the uh, issue for those LDP and SVB tunnel, we talk many times. Here we just pass. And about the, the concept of SR, we, we pass, we pass. This is all basic concept. Okay, let's look at the SR MPS tunneling and SRV6 tunneling design. So those two type of uh, tunnel, when, when they do the design, basically they consider the same thing. First is a services pass virtualization. Uh, we need to associate the service traffic with tunnel to achieve some degree of pass virtualization. And uh, second is uh, maintainability. So we need to keep the total number of a tunnel as, at the approach appropriate level so we can reduce the uh, live network maintenance pressures and uh, to shorten the optim optimization time and also easy to optimization so, so we can easily ensure that the traffic on the each tunnel is not uh, too heavy and another design principle is reliability we can we need to ensure the main services are under protection so we need to like uh, to to deploy like uh, the ti rfa frr And other things like the HSB, those kind of key, uh, those kind of technology to make the key services is under the protection. Those key services can be quickly converged. And the last uh, design principle is scalability. We need to consider the possible network expansion in the future when we design those kind of kernel. So basically, when we select the SR MPS tunnel, we will use end-to-end -end tunnel. We will create the SR tunnel from one PE to another PE, from south to the end. So SR MPS policy is most of the time will be used. Most of the time will be used. And for SR MPS policy pass, basically there will be two type of pass. First is with a single candidate pass with a mounting segment. 
single candidate pass with a mountain segment pass. Another is a mountain uh, candidate pass with a single segment pass. Uh, this means the single uh, candidate pass means I have one pass from one place to another, but I have two ways to reach there. So those two way, if we choose this way, it will do in the load balancing. Another is uh, using the mounting candidate pass. And each candidate pass, I only have one way to reach there, but we have another candidate pass. So this will be active, another will be the backup. Okay, so there will be two ways to do the uh, SM, SIMPS policy. When, when you're trying to deploy the SIMPS policy. And uh, uh, then how to lead, how to do the steering, how to uh, steer the uh, how to steer the traffic into the tunnel, we also have two ways. One is color-based and another is a DSAP based. The DSAP based is recommended because based on the DSAP, for different services, we can go to different paths. It will be better. It will be better. But the color-based color traffic uh, uh, division, it will be much more easy to deploy. Uh, so basically that uh, the DSAP is recommended, but if you want to use the color, this is also okay. Color-based, it is also okay. And besides the, uh, and the best effort of boarding also should be deployed for SIMPS, uh, because this best effort tunneling will be used as a escape tunnel. The best effort tunnel means escape tunnel. If the SIMPS policy is filled, all the SIMPS policy tunnel is filled, we can still use the SIMPS BE to, to carry the traffic, to carry the traffic. Okay, uh, then let's go to the SRV6. So SRV6, when you're planning the tunnel, uh, you, uh, the, uh, the principle is same with SIMPS kernel design. SRV6 kernel design principle is same with SIMPS kernel design. And uh, also for the SRV6 kernel design, when you're steering the traffic, uh, also two ways, color-based and uh, DSAP-based. And it is recommended we use DSAP. And for the policy path planning, same, we can use either mounting candidate pass, single segment pass, or single uh, candidate pass, mounting segment pass. Uh, this one, we can have hot standby. And here we can do the load balancing, ECMP. We can do the ECMP. Okay, th this is based on your requirement. You can choose one of them. And also for SRV6, the best effort can also need to be deployed in case SRV6 policy is filled can use the SRV6 BE. And another is a VPN design, VPN design. Uh, so, uh, so first, we need to consider, when we design the VPN, we need to classify the VPN. We can classify the DP, VPN into many, based on mm, different, uh, 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 based on the requirement. For example, you can use one VPN for major services, one VPN for non-major services, one VPN for external services, and one VPN for internal services. It's based on the requirement. And when you're trying to classify the VPN, you should do it at the access layer, at the access point, which means in the PE, you do the planning, you, you, you configure the IP VPN instance, right? And uh, after you uh, finish uh, the classification for VPN, you need to think about how to carry the VPN network, how to carry the VPN network. So for the IPv4 root entrance, we can use VPN v4 or eVPN to carry the VPN uh, root entrance. Both of them is okay. You can choose one of them either VPN v4 or eVPN, both of them, they are similar. So it doesn't matter. And if you're trying to forward exchange the IPv6 root entrance, 
recommended is use eVPN. Although VPN v6 in some devices, in some situation you can use, but uh, we will have, we were facing a little bit of problem. When we're trying to use the VPN v6, this uh, protocol, this IP address family to carry the IPv6 uh, private root entrance, we will run into some problem. So recommended is use eVPN. Use eVPN to forward, to exchange the IPv6 private loots, okay? So this one is recommended, you can see here. Okay, so that is uh, for kernel and uh, VPN design. And uh, then let's look at the SLA and the reliability design. So let's look at the SRA first. SRA, we have two uh, type of design, choose design and the slice design. Uh, there will be uh, SRA overview first. First, we need to answer one question, like why we need SRA? Uh, why we need queues? Why we need the network slicing? The reason is this, even we use SR and SRV6, we use SR and SRV6 to plan in the past, but for SR and SRV6, after they plan in the past, after they plan in the past, they cannot guarantee, they cannot limit the traffic bandwidth which will be used. For example, in your controller, in the controller, you, you're planning, I want one gigabit bandwidth. I want one gigabit bandwidth. And it, then, the controller calculator a, a result and it tell you that this path can guarantee one gigabit. But when the traffic when the when the traffic is coming, for example, this is two gigabit traffic coming, this traffic will still follow this path. The SI and the SRV6 do not have the function to control to limit the traffic bandwidth. The MPS TE have, but for SR, MPS and SRV6, they do not have. So we need to deploy the SRA technology, which will be queues and the network slicing to limit it, the traffic which will be used, which will, will use in the network. Like, okay, this is why we need it. So for, so for the queues, we need to follow, in the following, uh, uh, we need to follow these principles, those four principles. First is a, a reasonable list. And the resource must be located appropriately based on the importance of the services and the consistency. Okay, the queues, once you do the configuration in the one devices, other devices need to have the same configuration. And the scalability, the current queues must take into account of future services expansion and maintainability. So the queues policy may be frequently adjusted during the root maintenance. So ensure the queues can be easily adjusted and maintained. So here is an example that the commonly, in the common network for different, for the common enterprises, which different type of services should set you into a different way. This is an example. Okay, if you want, you can follow this. And the queues most time will be deployed like uh, in, the, in the PE, like we can do the remarking. And in, for the uh, devices outbound, for the traffic outbound, we can deploy like uh, the congestion avoidance and congestion management. And uh, the second is uh, the network slicing network slicing. So why we need network slicing? Because the queues is a software pipe. So we need to have some way to create the hard pipe. Hard pipe. So basically we will have uh, two type of uh, network slicing. First is a centralized sub interface. Another is a flex E. Uh, about which type of uh, 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 technology, about network slicing technology we're gonna use, I will talk a little bit later. So for slicing, 
first, the network slicing design, uh, different services, we can put it to, into different network slice. And for the SRB channel, SRV6 and SRMPS, those SRB channel, we can put it into a default slice. And for the SR policy, we can uh, deploy into the services uh, slice, services slice. And the different slices, they can have different paths, no problem. And for the uh, network uh, uh, slicing, they will be used in different scenarios. If your transmission barrier one network you are using is an MSTP network, the only uh, network slicing technology you can use is a channelized sub-interface. And if your uh, transmission barrier one uh, you are using is the OTN, you can use either FlexD and uh, or maybe ch uh, channelized sub-interface. This is because uh, there are some, uh, how do I say, the FlexD is a 1.5 layer technology. The MSTP will like, uh, Will erase, will, will delete all the information for the FlexC. So MSTP actually cannot use FlexC, but uh, the channelized uh, sub interface can be used. So this is a uh, uh, two technology will be used in two different scenarios. And here's a typical network slicing planning. For example, for the internal communication, we can give them 5G. External, we can have another slice. Internet services are now sliced, new services are now sliced. We, we, we can do it in this way. And the next is the reliability design. So, uh, so reliability design, we will have three types of reliability, controller, device, and the network reliability. So controller reliability, basically we just, uh, we needed to install our controller into different virtual machine into the, in case one virtual machine is filled, another virtual machine can still uh, function. So the controller can be still working. And also for the controller, we can create an active side and a standby side. And uh, if, one, if the active side is built, the standby side can be used to, uh, to, to provide the SDN services. And also for the controller, when you connect with the devices, it is recommended we enable the BGP GR feature. BGP GR feature because the segment routing policy, the SR or SRV6 policy, that is a BGP root entrance. So if the BGP neighbor relationship is uh, filled, this root entrance will be withdrawn. This policy will be withdrawn, so the traffic cannot reach to the other end. So that's why we need to deploy the GR in case the uh, connection between the controller and the devices is uh, lost, is temporarily lost. So for the device reliability, basically we just need to have uh, one plus one active standby protection for the main parts, like the control board, like the uh, uh, SFU, it's central, like the power module. And the network reliability, we have many technology we can use like SBFD to do detection, IPFR, Anycast, FR, HSB, mirror state, micro loop avoidance, it's central. So it will be used in different scenarios. Uh, this part, and we actually already talked yesterday. For example, in the South network, we can use BFD to, do, to detect the connectivity and use IPFR to faster switch to another link. And for the transit network reliability, we also need, we can deploy the BFD or maybe SBFD. And then we can use the TR, RFA, FR uh, to ensure if there are some um, problem, we can switch, uh, faster switch over to another place. And for the destination reliability, most of the time we will use the VPN FR. The VPN FR will use the BFD uh, to uh, we, we can detect the v we can use the VPN FR to prevent the egress reliability. And for the the destination network between the P and the CE, we can use the IPFR 
to fastly switch to another path. Okay, so that is SLA and the reliability. Uh, then uh, let's look at the optimization and the ONM uh, design for Enterprise Level 1. So about this part, uh, there's only one thing you need to know is uh, when, you, when we're trying to optimize our network, we need to set uh, some maintenance window. Uh, when, uh, so in this maintenance window, we can do the optimization, we can do the uh, uh, operation and management. So let's look at the network optimization design. We basically will have three, the network performance, uh, monitoring design, traffic op optimization design, application optimization design. So uh, for the network performance monitoring, we can have SNMP telemetry in QA and uh, TWAMP to help us to do it. And uh, for the SNMP, they will be used just to detect the common device performance like the uh, interface usage, like the link uh, connectivity. This is what we can do by the SNMP. But if we deploy, if, if we wanted to measure our network performance more accurately in the second, we need to use a telemetry. And the TWAMP will be used to detect the link quality. And uh, uh, so for the TWAMP, we can detect the link bandwidth usage, link delay, kernel bandwidth usage, and kernel packet loose rate. Okay, so if you wanted to detect those kind of uh, 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 parameters, performance, we can deploy the TWAMP. And uh, for the, uh, uh, here is also another TWAMP. This is how is TWAMP works. And uh, uh, okay, this, this is for the T1. And uh, for the traffic optimization design, for the traffic optimization design, this optimization is being done at the uh, controller level. So for the controller, we can based on, we, we have two ways to do the optimization. First, we can do the link optimization. Link optimization is uh, for certain link. If this link is not good, so all the kernel related to this link will be optimized. And the kernel optimization is a global optimization. All the kernel from, from this, uh, this kernel, this certain kernel from end to end, we will select the best path. This is the kernel optimization. So how to do the optimization in the controller? We can based on, we, we can do it automatically or manually. For, so for example, if, some parameters is reaching to the threshold, we can do the optimization or we can do the uh, schedule, uh, we, we can based on the, we can do the optimization timely, like schedule some time and to do the uh, optimization. Okay, and here is a scenario like uh, uh, scheduled optimization, automatic optimization upon the bandwidth usage threshold, or maybe we have some maintenance window like uh, to do the optimization. Uh, and this, uh, the last is a uh, application uh, optimization. So op application optimization basically means we based on the DSCP to do the optimization. Different services, uh, we can put into different kernel. So if one, Kernel is filled, uh, this DSAP can, based on DSAP, it can go to another way. So this is how, how, we, how we do the uh, application, uh, like uh, how, how DSAP, uh, different DSAP can go to different kernel. So uh, if you want to, to optimize the application, you should, uh, based on DSAP, to steering the traffic, to steer the traffic into different kernel. Okay, the last is uh, for O and M design. We have a user management design and a maintenance uh, network. So for the user management, we needed to separate the user tag, okay, based on, 
different user type. You should put, you, you should based on the, uh, the, uh, the account and put a different account into different user type. So this can make uh, the controller much more secure. And also we need to set the maintenance window. Uh, so if there are something happened, we can put a maintenance window here and we will, the tunnel will automatically bypass this, uh, 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 bypass this devices, this fault devices, this targeted devices. And uh, in this maintenance window, in this time, in this maintenance window, we can fix this problem. So this is pretty much about the barrier one design. Any problem? Okay, if there's no problem, let's take 10 minutes break. Then we will continue to talk about the IPE, uh, T10 and uh, evolution channel.